craft brewery in the US. Uh, great, great to understand. A chance to help shape our industry. And this is one of those occasions. So this interactive session will assist OI Glass with the design selection and help shape the future of Asian inspired premium glass packaging. So we're joined by the OI Glass team that have been working on this project. Uh, we have Bayard Cinema, who is the commercial lead for Asia. Steffi McCrudden, who is their global design lead. And we'll also be joined by Anton Damadi, who is the beer category lead for Asia for OI Glass. And we're also very, uh, uh, very happy to be able to welcome up on the Seabrew stage, uh, Lok Trong, who is the founder and CEO of East West Brewing, is waving his hand there. Hi, Lok, how are you doing? All well? Good. Um, and he's based in Ho Chi Minh City. And we also have Luke Yardley, who is the founder and head brewer of Yardley Brothers Craft Brewing in Hong Kong. So it's been a long day and I hope you have a beer in hand for this session. So I've got a, I've got myself a beer here because um, we're all a lot more creative once we had a little hobby. So I'm going to hand you over to Bayard now and he'll explain how this session is going to run. Thank you, Charles, and uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, certainly nice to be here, and uh, I hope that you uh, enjoy the session. Um, so, really, what are we here? Um, stronger for the future, okay? Uh, and our sort of intro is good beer is good, but how do you stand out in a crowded market? Um, also, just a quick call out, um, you know, thanks to uh, Luke and Locke for joining the panel, uh, you know, having some insights from, uh, from you know, marketing and brewing is certainly uh, going to help us sort of frame uh, what success can look, look like. Um, so why are we here and, and what do we hope to achieve? Um, so we want to be able to create um, a brand building uh, val well, we, we want to be able to build um, brand building value for uh, Asia, um, Asian breweries. All right. Uh, we want to be able to sort of leverage the attributes of, of glass in doing that. Um, and we also want to be able to get some feedback today as to which bottle we want to take to market. Right, so we've got three um, Asian inspired designs, and then we've got a fourth design, which is inspired by um, drinking from a glass. All right, and I guess the you know the call out here, and Steffi, uh, I'll hand over in a sec. But you know, what has uh, been inspired by Asian design? Okay, um, so just have a think about you know when we're about to show you the designs. Just you know, what does that mean in terms of maybe shape, maybe the size of the bottle? things like that. Um, and we also want to be able to find brewers to help take to market this bottle. Okay. And we also want to understand how OI can support um, the brewers into market. And just to give you an example of what we've done pre previously, um, we, I think it was about a couple of years ago, we were in the IBA uh, in Mel Melbourne, and we actually launched a few new products and actually, we had a sort of a, a stand. We had um, had two birds in stone and wood. So we're actually sort of partnering with the brewers to get the products into market. And they actually became sort of brand ambassadors for us. So when we sort of look at, you know, creating value for that, also have in mind that not only are we supplying the glass, okay, but we're trying to sort of build a, a broader value base that we can all win in. All right. Um, so today, uh, how are we going to do it? Okay, so we've got uh, the interactive uh, workshop. Have a little bit of fun there. Uh, there'll be some opportunities to ask some questions. Uh, we'll try our best to answer those questions. What we can't answer, uh, we can take offline and uh, get back in touch with you. Also, when we uh, the survey piece and choose, choosing the favourite design, we've actually got a. Um, and I'll cut in and out of some some screens. We use a a, pro, um, a web website called menti.com. All right, so you'll get presented in front of you a page, uh, and you go to menti.com if you if you wanted to type that in as a your know, URL, or if you've got a smartphone, you just get to the camera. You can take a photo of the QR code. 
All right, we'll give you about sort of 20 seconds to do that or, or thereabouts, uh, and then you'll be able to vote on that or give feedback on four survey questions that we're going to be going through. Um, so I hope that's clear. Um, have fun. Uh, we're here to help. So uh, I'll pass over to you, Steffi. Thank you. Thank you, Bayad. Did you want to do the introduction for I that's on the screen real quick? Uh, sure, can do. Um, so, OI, who are we? Uh, so, OI, um, world uh, leading glass man manufacturer. Uh, we've got 72 plants uh, in 20 countries. In Asia, uh, we operate four plants. Uh, so, we've got uh, Ho Chi Minh, Jakarta, uh, um, and one in Malaysia, and Jo Johor, and also Zhao Qing in China. All right. So we've probably got about 1,400 employees uh, around Asia. Uh, I work out of the Singapore office. Um, and, you know, what do, we, what do we do, right? So we're actually been on a little bit of a journey, OI. Uh, so when I've, I've been with OI for about seven years. And when we first joined, uh, you know, what did we do? Well, we sell quality glass uh, in, you know, on, on time and full. But what we've actually moved to is, is actually to be more sort of insight and consumer led, right? So we're all about building brands, all right? Um, so, you know, we're very, we're very proud of doing, doing that. And the conversations we have with customers is continues to evolve. And, you know, doing sessions like this is, is one way in which we can to demonstrate that. Uh, we certainly pr uh, you know, pride ourselves on quality, uh, consist consistency. Um, so that's what you get with dealing with OI. Um, and we make what matters. Okay, so we across Asia we, we work with a lot of brands: beer, uh, non-alcoholic spirits, uh, food, um, and you know we 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 love glass, right? So it's all about taste. It's about quality, um, health. Okay, it's inert. You know when you drink from it, and also you know we believe that it's the world's most sustainable package. All right, so in a, in a perfect uh, recycling system, uh, one bottle will make one bottle forever. Uh, and glass is made of four uh, ingredients. So you've got sand, some more silica sand, limestone, and soda ash. And the biggest uh, input is uh, colored or recycled glass. Right, so in every bottle that we make, depending on the plant, it could be 30%. We can go up to about 80, 90%. Depends on the color availability. Um, so that's it for me. Quick, yeah, let me show the quick video for our eye then. We are makers, value creators, scientists, inventors, engineers, designers, industry shakers. We're transformers, sculptors of sand and fire. We capture the essence of a brand like no one else can, forming beautiful stories told through glass packaging in our signatures on every bottle we make. We transform moments into magic. Engage your senses, the sound of bottles toasting, the way it feels in your hand. A taste so pure, it's gotta be glass. A packaging so sustainable, it can be recycled again and again and again and again. We turn beverages into icons, build brands as famous as their silhouette. Shut your eyes. Can you see it? We're masters of engineering emotions that transcend language. Love. Amor. I. Joy. Si. Le. Radist. Trust. Confi. Confiance. We've always adapted to change, and we're prepared for the future. A healthier, more sustainable, more exciting future. Because our mission is transparent, clear as glass. We have two initials, and the emotion we feel is pride. OI, Engineering Emotions. Okay, um, so just a couple more slides from me before I pass over to Steppy. Uh, so this slide here is all about what we call activating the unconscious. So what I want for us today is to go from sort of a fixed, closed mindset to an open mindset. I've got the saying, if you, if you do what you've always done, you get what you've always got, okay? Today, we've got an awesome opportunity to be able to look at which bottle we're going to be able to support and take into Asia market, all right? Um, this is all new to us, um, you know, and I really hope that you give us some feedback 
on this. So the designs that we're showing have had a lot of research just to get to this, this stage, okay? So we've had our uh, Vietnam team sort of lead some consumer insights. Um, so that we've, you know, we've led to this point for the three Asian um, design bottles. And from the US team, the, uh, you know, the, the, the container that you're gonna see is also informed uh, with a lot of uh, consumer insights. Um, so, you know, two different stories um, and we look forward to getting your feedback. So today's agenda, uh, we'll go through Steffi. She's got four mood boards, a short video so you can see them in action. Uh, then we'll break into Menti, um, where you can scan. Uh, then we'll have about five, six minutes. And then subsequent four questions, as you can see there. Um, so once we're sort of finished, I'll hand over to Luke or Locke you know, to, for them to offer some feedback. And then it's just a open discussion. So post your questions in the chat. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, and Charles can sort of mo moderate as to who answers, et cetera. And then we'll finish off with another vote to see if that has actually changed as you learn more about what these bottles are about. Um, so that's it. Over to you, Steffi. Thanks, Bayad. And um, yeah, uh, happy evening, everyone. So let me get started quickly here and uh, walk you actually through the designs we have developed for tonight. And we're super keen to get your feedback. So stay on for the mentee and uh, let us know what you think. Form language uh, plays a very important part in packaging design. Consumers are unconsciously drawn towards things that look and feel familiar. It is important that when we design packaging, that we take clues from familiar things we know from areas such as like architecture or cultural specifics or anything related to what we see in nature. Establishing an emotional connection with the consumer through the packaging by taking this into account will help you to stand out on the shelf. What we see being sketched here is a pagoda. Pagoda is a more generic term referring to a place of worship. The modern pagoda is an evolution of the ancient Indian stupa, a tomb-like structure in which sacred relics could be kept safe. The architectural structure spread across Asia, taking on many diverse forms as details specific to different regions were incorporated into the overall design. Pagodas are commonly made of wood, brick or stone, and each has an upcurved overhanging roof. The pagoda has three sections, a base, a body, and a top, just like the bottle we have designed that is truly fully inspired by the design of a pagoda. And here you have a final rendering, basically a, a, a pre-shoot of what you're gonna see in the video. But let me get started with design number two. Asia has an extensive waterway system where floating markets are a very traditional way of trading goods. Existing for more than 100 years, the floating markets are melting pots, which have experienced the fusion of nationalities and cultures for centuries. The traditional boat, called Tun, has a very iconic shape. The hull is relatively slender and gracefully tapered towards both ends. The bow, in particular, rises in a long curve with a very long overhanging cutwater reaching out over the sea. Taking the beautiful curve of the hull as the main element to construct the neck of the bottle design, the design also holds true on keeping your beer colder longer, which is facilitated by the wider neck. Let me take you through design number three. Flowing rivers. They have always been there and they have been changing their riverbeds since the beginning of time. The water level constantly changes and sometimes they even flood entire districts. Why is it that we calm down when we are near water? This deep biological connection has shown to trigger an immediate response in our brains when we are near water. In fact, the mere sight and sound of water can induce a flood of neurochemicals that promote wellness, increase blood flow to the brain and heart, and induce relaxation. We've been using the natural flowing lines of a river to build a bottle design that will encourage the consumer to run their finger over the contour of the bottle and interact with the packaging 
in a very natural way. And last but not least, design number four. Some may say good beer is good beer. Doesn't matter from which vessel you actually drink it. I personally disagree. Is it all empty promises or do these glasses make beer taste and smell better? There's purpose behind the different designs for glassware. A snifter, stemmed, white boat, tapered in at the top, is designed for maximum concentration of volatile organic compounds, which is basically aroma. The large surface area contained liquid helps evaporate it. The narrow top traps the aroma inside the glass while the rounded bottom allows the container to fit perfectly in your hand. The Snifter drink tainer is the perfect to go solution that carries the largest commercially available closure for pressure content and pasteurization, which is a 42 millimeter rib cap. And it is the closest solution to replicate a draft experience for you. And keep those four in mind. And I'm going to show you a quick video of how those look in action. Okay, I'll turn it back over to Bayard. Thanks, uh, Steffi. Righto, so bear with me. I'm just going to uh, share screen. All right, so we've got four designs in there. Okay, um, we've got the Thung or the River. Um, uh, sorry, the boat design, uh, we've got the pagoda design, we've got the river design, and then we've got the drink, uh, snifter drink tainer. Um, now these are all currently sort of proposed in amber, but of course, if you're, depending on what you're going to be filling, um, you know, there's nothing stopping us running it in, in flint, you know, if you're looking beyond bear, for example. Um, in terms of sizing, you know, we've actually looked at, um, you know, doing something a little bit different, okay? Um, so this is another thing that we can do to differentiate the design um, in terms of the serving size. So we've actually proposed maybe 328 mils. Um, so if you look at the digits, you know, having eight um, is, is is deemed to be a lucky number. And if you look at the sort of the drink tainer, uh, the snip to drink tainer, that's a, a slightly smaller serve as, as well. Um, 
now we've actually got um, some other shots. So as we're sort of talking, I can jump in and out of some of the other shots. And we've got some videos and a bit more information about the rip cap for the drink container. Uh, and also how it's actually filled, right? So these are one-way bottles. So typically a little bit lighter than what you would uh, might have with a returnable glass. Uh, and for the sniff to drink container, um, you can actually fill that uh, actually on premise uh, using a close a closure system, and we will go into that. Um, that you can actually, you know, your guests can then actually take home for them, as as that was showed in the video. All right. So look, first thing that we're going to do there is that I'm going to get you guys to get your phones or go to your web web page. And there's, you'll see a QR code in there. So if you can all just take a, a shot of that or go to menti.com and open that up in your, um, your browser. Uh, and I'll just hold there for about sort of 10, 15, 20 seconds just to allow for all of you to get to that page. And then I'll release the page where you'll then be able to go and put your, um, we'll vote for your favorite. Okay, so it's actually from one to four. So you're number one, and then your your next favorite, third favorite, fourth favorite, and all our uh, answers are sort of consolidated for us to be able to look at which one um, that we're going to be talking to today. All right, so let me move over. So <clears throat> you should now have a, a page up on your phones or your um, screens where you can select which design that you want to be able to, um, to choose. So if you can then choose your four favorites. So as you can see, it's all live, um, and we can see how many people are sort of voting. So we've got about 20 votes in. I think the boat design of the pagoda designs are looking on, and the drink, uh, sniff to drink tain is currently in fourth. So I'll leave it just for another couple more seconds. Okay. Looks like we've got a fighting one between the boat design and the pagoda design. <laughs> Let's take them both. <laughs> Let's take them both. I agree. All right. So, look, next, um, let's just talk to the boat design and the pagoda design. So, look, let me stop sharing screen. Uh, we'll talk to those. So, what I'll do, I'll get um, uh, Locke, if you wanted just to maybe get some feedback as to what those designs are and, and how you feel that, you know, designers uh maybe differentiated that to what's in market and you know and any other insights that you think you might like to share me, me or, or luke and our, uh, our names kind of are similar right so Sorry, okay Locke. um for i mean I, I can't speak for for the market but you know we were always kind of you know true to ourselves in terms of what we believe so out of the four designs actually the the two that that I thought were my favorite were the, the number three and number four. So the the, the reason being why, why I really chose the um, the flow and lines was it kind of connected a little bit in terms of the, the overall, you know, flow and river and the feng shui that it goes with, uh, with 
even our industry, right? It has to do with uh, with water and and rivers are always something that that we're always looking for for like wealth and, and prosperity. And then the other one was to really kind of stay very very crafty to uh, just being unique and and very different was the snifter style design, the drink tainer. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, it, it was not in alignment with everybody else. Uh, but I still think those two, if we are to take the bottles, that those two would capture the attention a, a little bit better than uh, than the, the previous two. And for for us, generally, when when we launch a bottle, right, there's just a few different things that 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 we think about is. One is the quality. Uh, two is the the weight. You know where whether we can can sh ship the product for a lower cost if the weight is is between like two hundred and two hundred and fifty grams. That would be amazing, but most bottles are going to be around like 300, 320 grams. Um, but to ensure the quality that you know it's not going to be over kind of pressurized and 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 explode. So we actually have been kind of happy customers of OI for the past few years now. So we we do trust the quality of the product for us to be using. And in terms of, you know, for, for our, the light beers that we choose, normally it goes with a style of bottle that kind of looks very, you know, light, like a flint bottle or a bottle that that, that is uh, thin and also the actual weight. For our heavier beers, we use generally more of like an oversized bottle so that it really kind of brings, um, it really looks heavy. So we, we only put our heavy beer in like 500 ml bottles that are, are very, very dark versus the the, the lighter ones where we'll, we'll use like, you know, anything that's fresh or clean or very crisp, we'll, we'll, we prefer to use like a, a flint bottle. And obviously, for a lot of things, right? When you're producing more at a at a scale, cost is always going to be be an issue that you know you 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 weigh because the the margins that you make are what you put into the market to do the trade, right? And if you're over invested in the actual product to be exactly how you feel, then you need to make the choice of whether to keep it, you know, at at a certain volume, or do you anticipate that you know, the volume going to be a, it's going to be a lot. So if it's going to be a lot and growing uh, year over year, then cost is a very, very big, uh, 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 big thing for us to to uh, to make yeah. sure that we get the bottles. Yeah, it's an interesting um, one that you sort of say about the weight. So typically, you know, when we go to market, you know, we're probably there's two technologies that we can use to manufacture glass. So one is called blow and blow which is an older technology, typically heavier weights. Um, but we can also do what's called narrow neck press and blow, where we can take weight out, but still keep the structural uh, integrity and quality of the bottle. So for example, you know, for a returnable bottle, you know, it can be 280 for a 330 mil or thereabouts, 280, 300 grams. You know, whereas if you're going for like a one way uh, NMPB bottle, you know, that, that can be brought right down to, you know, 205, 210 grams, 220 grams. Now, the difference is how much it costs to get to market because you've got to, like, recover the mold costs. And, you know, one of the things today is to find out, you know, who's actually interested so that we can do a wash-up at this to see, you know, can we do blow-blow or NMPB? Um, you know, typically, it's better to do NMPB just on cost alone, but, uh, you know, we, we may need to just concentrate on blow blow just to get it into market. And maybe from the sizing perspective, just one comment, you know, there's nothing that prevents us from doing a 500. So all of those designs are being developed, keeping in mind that we can actually like scale this up into like bigger sizes as well. Great. Cool. And um, was there any questions from uh, attendees or Luke, did you have um, some comment on this? Hey guys, hopefully you can hear me. Yep. Good. Okay. Hey, hey hello everyone from Hong Kong. Um, yeah, I've got, got a bit of feedback. Um, so I think it's interesting uh, the designs you guys showed. Um, I actually agreed with Locke as far as what I thought was was uh, interesting for us as a brewery. Um, for the for number two for the boat one, 
uh, I think for a, as a brewery that we focus quite a lot on our design of our labels. So I want this, this the center of the bottle, the, the width of the bottle, to be really focusing the consumer's eye on the label. And it's got such a, a wide neck that I felt that that took away from focusing uh, on the, the main image. Um, uh, so that's probably what wouldn't be for me so much. Um, I quite liked uh, um, the, the Flowing Lines one. It's kind of, it has a bit of a Belgian-y vibe. A lot of what we do is um, barrel age stuff and, and um, we, we, we um, uh, play with some Belgian styles as well. Um, I, I just quite like the shape of it and it, it gives a vibe of a strong beer for me. I think uh, for a consumer, you might see that and think you, you're getting into some, a bit of trouble <laughs> or something like that. Um, it definitely, for me, just, just feels like, you know, it's kind of got a Belgian-y like shoot vibe, um, but with a bit of an Asian version, I guess, or slight change. Um, and the Snifter, I think the Snifter is really interesting because it... Um, offers uh, bottle producers another alternative to a rip-top can uh, without, you know, cutting your fingers or whatever on the, on the disposable part of the rip-top can. Um, from a packaging uh, point of view, I think it would be a challenge to use it uh, at a bigger scale. You'd have to check about uh, TO levels on how you're packaging. But from a consumer's perspective, it could be great for, you know, getting a whole lot of uh, volatile aromas out of it when you when the consumer opens it and has, gets the smell of the beer fresh. Um, you know, and maybe it's only really practical for like uh, um, bottle shops or, or bars for takeaway, but I suppose it could work well for, for sodas or, or other things. I, I, I don't know how I would retrofit my, my packaging line to, to cap in that way. Um, but, um, but it's an interesting product too. Mm. Actually, I can comment on this. There's a pretty much turnkey yeah. solution. So if you do apply a crown cork today, it's really just an easy change in the Kepa hat. Okay. Cool. I mean, it's, yeah, I'll say it adds, adds an interesting thing to, um, mm -hmm. for consumers to feel like they're drinking out of a glass, um, an actual pint glass you know, on the road. So yeah, it looks interesting. Okay. Um, look, let's move on to the next, uh, next Minty question. So let me just uh, pull that across. Okay, so what we're going to be um, asking the team. Um, so this is the first uh, survey of, of, um, of, of four questions. So what we're asking here is the practicalities of packaging from the most voted design. So which of these areas are the most challenging for you? Okay, so I'll just go to full screen. Uh, if you can get your phones out again and uh, take a photo of that. And once you've um, got that, you'll, you'll, sit, you'll go on the landing page. And then the next page, which I'm about to release, there's four considerations. So one is the filling line considerations. Uh, the second is closure costs, including the capping change parts. So that might be quite paramount for the, you know, for the drink tainer, for example. Um, the third is uh, labeling requirements. And then we've got a fourth selection, which is all three of the above. Okay, so let's get into the next one. Okay, so as you can see, it's a sliding scale, uh, and you can just agree, disagree in terms of what's uh, the most challenging. can see there, looking like filling line considerations um, is high up, followed by closure costs and labelling requirements. I guess the filling line consideration um, would make a lot of sense, right? So I guess the thing that we need to do um, from, from an OI perspective is, you know, if you do come forward and you're keen to be able to work with us, uh, is to understand what is your filling line set up. 
Okay, so how flexible is it compared to what you're putting down the line now? Um, yeah, and what other considerations do we need to know about in actually coming to the final, final design? All right. Things like closure costs, that makes sense. At the moment, we're using you know, crown, crown seal. Um, but you know, if, you're, if this is going to be on the go, you might consider a twist crown, for example. Okay, so let's go on filling line uh, considerations, closure costs, probably the two there. Uh, and I'll just stop sharing screen and I'll um, pass that over. Um, maybe uh, Luke, you might like to take that one. Oh, sorry, uh, bad. So, um, that the question, um, um, sorry, can you re repeat that? Oh, sorry. Just in terms of the feedback that we've got on the question around, you know, what what's the most challenging uh, in terms of uh, the you know, the getting it filled? So you've either got filling line, closure costs, labelling requirements, and the survey came back, you know, filling line. So I guess the question yeah. is, you know, what's your what's your experience in that? Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. Um, well, as a, as a sort of a, a smaller scale craft brewery. Uh, yeah, investing in a, in a bottom line is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, I think for, for, for a lot of um, sort of regional small brewers, it's, it's probably our most expensive piece of kit in the brewery. So um, yeah, yeah and, and there's a sort of a ver sort of variety of flexible options in the market as far as bottom lines. Um, so yeah, you don't want to have to completely change your your line. Um, luckily for us, actually, our, our bottom line is made uh, made in your back backyard, Bayard, in, in New Zealand. Uh, and it's, it's pretty flexible, so so we, we can change ours out. We do we use about uh, four. At the moment, we're running about four different shapes of bottles on, on our bottling line, um, and it's e easy enough to do. Um, labeling uh, is not that much of an issue. I mean, I say labeling really matters to us as a company that really focuses on creative design in our packaging. Um, I want there to be a big clear space um, for our labels, um, and that to sort of uh, dominate the. Um, uh, I think the the bottle, um, but at the same time, uh, I mean the, the labelling. It needs to be present so people can see it. But, but um, the cost of, of changing the, a label is not very much compared to changing a, a whole bottle line. Um, so um, and closure and, and caps. Uh, the main challenge there, I guess, is uh, MOQ for good quality is is pretty high. So you have to be buying pretty pretty large quantities if you want a good, good quality uh, cap. So you don't want to have too many uh, different sizes in, in your brewery. Um, you know, especially we're based in Hong Kong, so we don't have much space uh, for storage. Um, so uh, yeah, I guess that can be a consideration as well. Yeah. I think I can comment with some good news on the filling line consideration. So um, don't see this design as being like set in stone. You know, I mean. We had some mock-ups, we have some glass bottles. Um, we've developed this with a certain design intent, but you know, if we have to meet a diameter of 60.8 or 61 or you know, whatever this number is and, and a certain height, this is still something we can take into account and kind of adjust. So this is not like just set in stone, but still to be adjustable for somebody who would like to take something with this forward. Oh. Uh, any other questions? I can't. Uh, any on the people on the call? Is there any questions that you like asked or? Yeah, there's no there's no questions come through yet. So anyone has any questions about packaging or uh, about the design of the product? Please put them through the Q and A, um, or even just just put comments through the chats or the feeds. Uh, tell us tell us what you think about these designs. It's uh, very important feedback for the for the OI team. So let, let us know what you're thinking. I've just got a, a little question. I guess I can throw in there uh, for a um, for a sort of small to medium size size brewery. What sort of um, size MOQ is it working with OI? I've I've only ever worked with um, basically bottle trading companies where you know we'll, we'll buy uh, uh, a pallet or two or, or you know, sometimes we'll buy out uh, a container, but not that often. So how, how does it work with working with the, the big guys like you as, as far as ordering bottles from? 
how many do we have to order? Good question. Um, Anton, do you want to have a crack at that one? Uh, sorry, just just joining. Uh, couldn't hear you clearly. What uh, can you can you uh, explain? The me? Oh, well, just just wondering uh, how, how does it work? Um, uh, basically, what's how does it work with uh, OI with MOQ? Like, if we want to, if someone wants to buy buy bottles, um, is it half a million bottles, or can, can you guys do smaller amounts? How, how does that work? Okay, thanks for the question. So uh, we thought about this a few times before we uh, bring this up, right? So um, I think uh, in terms of size, I think uh, we're uh, since this uh, we can say that this is uh, a starting run, right? Starting project. So I think uh, we try to be flexible in terms of MOQ and everything. So so I think it depends. Uh, I mean, uh, later on we can have a discussion about that. So maybe in terms of um, business visibility we can actually accommodate based on your uh actual requirement so uh so yeah i think in terms of moq it's still uh we'll try to be as, as flexible as we could right you know hope that answers your question so uh, or maybe if you want to get into more details we can take that uh, uh right for the second yeah talk about it in more detail. So I'll just, I'll just, just add, add a little bit to what Anton's saying. So when we typically do our first production, we're, we're going to manufacture a number of containers, okay? Uh, now, in terms of what the commercial offer is, when we go to market, that will be one part of the consideration around how we could create value and success for both, both of us, all right? So, you know, the answer, the answer is uh, it can be many many things but we wouldn't be expecting launch customers to be ordering uh 500,000 bottles in the first instance okay you know if we can get 10 breweries together to be able to get to the first production and everyone's happy to contribute their bit whether it's 20,000 or 50,000 or whatever it's going to be that enables us to get that first production and then we can be creative about how to get those bottles all right so we need need to understand you know, where is the demand? Is it mainly Singapore? Is it Hong Kong? Is it in Ho Chi Minh? Uh, which will then determine where we make it, whether we make it in Blow Blow or NMPB. And then and it then enables us to have a discussion around where we hold stocks. You know, are we selling X Works? Are we putting in a container? Do we need to work in with a reseller? You know, all these are questions that we need to consider. Okay. Right, let's keep moving on. I'm just going to share screen. So now we've got a third uh, question. Uh, so let me share screen again. Uh, so this question is all about commercially what is more important uh, to you. Okay. So if you can just go get your uh, phones again and we'll just have a uh, another Another scan. Um, and the questions um, uh, that we've got here, right? So commercially, what is more important to you? You're going to get presented four uh, questions. So one is competitive unit pricing. The second being flexible payment terms. Uh, C is the container is constantly in stock. And then D is that OI offers PR and go-to-market support, all right? So what this is designed to do is just to give us some insights as to, you know, what are the challenges, right? Is it just pricing or is it, is it pricing mixed with, you know, flexible payment terms? Um, you know, is it always in stock? I mean, that's, that's probably always a given. Um, and if you do want to partner with, with OI, if we do offer you, um, you know, some go-to-market support, right? So that might be joining us at the next Seabrew, uh, wherever that's going to be. I've heard it's, no, I'm kidding, I don't know where it is. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just, you know, that's a, a general discussion, right? So we can see we've got competitive unit pricing. Uh, container is constantly in stock is pretty important. 
I would totally agree on that one myself if I was a brewer. That actually poses an interesting question. I guess, um, you know, have you had, um, you know, experiences where the container's not in stock? Yeah, and what does that mean, you know, for, for you and being able to have consistent product in market? Okay, so look, why don't I pass that on to um, who would like to, to Locke, Would you like to have a, a go on that one? Sure. Okay, so in in terms of um, of competitive pricing, it's something that that we actually look, you know, a lot for because bottle SKUs is is our biggest kind of movers at East West. And, you know, when, when I, <clears throat> back to previously, when you're, you're so tied up with, you know, it could be a penny here, it could be a penny there, but when you're doing like containers and containers of it, it really adds up very, very quickly, right? And coming back to the more that you can save on the overall packaging, uh, the more you can put into the market to develop uh, your, your brand or you can make more sales and especially in I think in Asia right that that really the off trade or really the the customers who's buying our beer are very uh, business savvy so they'll be they will be driving you for all the margins that really you have right so just a penny save here the, the more flexible we can be there and the faster the, that we can grow um, so very very big deal and it allows us to keep our prices to a at a certain level where when we are are putting that into the market, it's not so much over what similar styles of beer are are selling for. Um, can can I see the slide on the number two? Uh, from from what I remember on slide number two is the flexible payment term. Right? Is that is that correct? Yeah. Yep. So so that that is also a big a big thing, right? The if you're able to get flexible payment term, uh, it means that you can can book a large amount of quantity at at uh, the initial kind of development in the pricing between you know the supplier and 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 us. So if we're able to have flexible packaging uh, payment terms, we're able to, for example, order a million bottles or 500,000 bottles. But, you know, the term needs to to reflect on what is the actual product that is going to move. So if you're ordering half a million bottles and you're only selling, uh, you know, 100,000 bottles per month, then if there's flexible packaging uh, payment term, and then you're able to kind of get that pricing down a little bit as well as to ensure that you're always going to have that product in in stock and the container constantly in stock that reflects back into the the competitive pricing and flexible payment term um, when you actually make that 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 big commitment or that commitment to have more then the other two kind of follows on on, on the top and in terms of like PR route to market, I think that's the least important that we need support from from the the bottle supplier, because I don't think that you know OI knows as well as we do or understand our strategy as much as as we do in terms of where we want to place these bottles in the market, right? So kind of overall, you know, letting people know that that East West is buying o OI products doesn't help as much in terms of you know will these be able to 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 be would these be able to sell unless you know oi says this year we want to buy a thousand cases for our staff uh, down uh, down at the the glass factory then then okay i i think that if that's possible we can move that up to the the, the top right but uh yeah these really reflect uh what my my choices were in terms of uh of what's important yeah in the um just on the pr thing what we've done in the past is to be able to work with the brewers on some promotional video so the brewers would talk around 
what's good in the bottle and we would talk uh, around you know why the brewers sort of choose glass and a lot of that go goes into the sustainability piece right um, and then it just enables you to you know to be able to share that through a different point of view into your social feeds okay just sort of mindful of timing so i'm just going to go to the uh the next one so i'm just going to share screen okay so this one here um consumer acceptance response from the most voted design uh so will consumers or your customers pay more because of these attributes all right so if you get your uh, camera out again um, and there's going to be four options in there all right so the first one being would uh would uh, would love to buy local brands and asian inspired glass uh, containers being the first one then we're going to be believe drinking from glass bottles improves the taste experience uh the third one is uh love product attributes that include premium new and exciting so you know we've taken a new bottle to market and the fourth one is going to be love glass because it's the most recyclable packaging so all different uh slightly different um uh, angles all right so if you can just put your votes in there and we'll have a have a chat about what the feedback is on that meters not working oh no here we go so getting a little bit of feedback there so thank you for that um all quite even at the moment So I guess one of the things that you know when you do go to market is that you want to be able to talk around you know where where the design came came from. So I guess that you know love product attributes that include premium, new, and exciting uh, is is certainly one area that you can concentrate on from your branding point of view. Uh, drinking from glass bottles improves taste experience. You know, that's that's reasonably high up there, um, and the love glass because the most recyclable packaging okay well good so thanks for putting in your votes um luke do you want to have a have a have a uh, some feedback on that yep. uh, yeah sure uh i think the thing that pops out for me is um uh talking about a product that has attributes that are premium um, uh, for us, we, we uh, you know, we're not a, a, a massive volume producer. We make a lot of sour beers and barrel aged stuff, and our products go to market at a much higher price. So, unusual and specialist uh, bottles are what we like. Um, and um, so, so yeah, that, that matters a lot. It, it's, it's the whole package. Uh, we call it the product we put in there, but also the, the shape. You know, we use a lot of wine shaped bottles. Um, we use Belgian style shape bottles, um, and uh, yes, that, that matters. That, that definitely uh, matters to us. Um, funny, I'm going back to the, the the previous mention about about reliability. When we first started, all of our bottles were matte black on yep. the outside. It turned out that was a terrible idea because the factory stopped making them, and we had to change everything uh, after about two years of running my brewery. <laughs> we had oh, to change no. all our bottling, so that was that was unfortunate. Um, <laughs> But uh, so yeah, I, I guess reliability, but also I say that the the importance of um, the fact that the, the bottle gives sort of a premium uh, feel to, to a premium product is really important. Um, uh, I, I do actually believe in recyclability of glass. Uh, I think that um, I don't see why you know people talk about cans being uh, better in any way. Uh, I, I don't see that uh, particularly, um, and. Um, as far as the other things, uh, as far as the inspired, um, sort of Asian inspired glass shape, um, that's personally for me, that's not, a, uh, not, not 
uh, something that, that we we go for um, uh, at the moment, I suppose. Um, but um, but uh, but yeah, I guess. Uh, but it comes down to having a, a bottle that looks really, really nice and, and make sure the consumer knows it's a premium product. That's why they're paying extra for, for a Yardi Brothers Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I think there's one question in there. What about the fact that glass is BPA free? Um, so, yeah, sure. Look, glass is uh, sort of inert, right? Um, yeah. And I think the, you know, the. You know, we, we certainly sort of love that uh, yeah, glasses, um, you know, it's better for you, right? It doesn't sort of impart any taste in that. Um, and I guess you've always got that challenge against different options in, in pack, packaging. Uh, you know, and glass is great for certain circumstances. You know, uh, you know it's colder, it stays colder for longer, for example. So once it's cold, it's, you know, it's certainly the winning one. Um, yeah, in terms of that comment, uh, glass is BEPA free. It sure is, right? Um, you know, as we sort of say, if you're if you're not drinking out of glass, you're drinking out of plas plas plastic. Um, you know, and that would uh, probably raise some eyebrows, right? But you just need to be sort of mindful as to you know what is right for your uh, brand, you know, and your consumers. And I guess there's a lot of pressures in there from different angles as to you know which one you choose. Certainly for us, for glass, you know, it is a premium. People pay more for glass. So it's not necessarily a cost discussion. It's more of a value creation discussion. You know, consumers are driven to pick up glass, right? So whether it's a bottle or picking up a glass, um, you know, to drink, you pour into glass, um, that's what people do. You typically don't drink out of plas plastic, for example. Um, right, we've just got two more questions to go, so I'm just going to uh, escape out of this one and we'll go straight into the next uh, question. So this one here is all about supply chain uh, practicalities. Um, same format as before, so there's four options. I prefer to buy stock uh, X works and I manage my own logistics. Uh, the second one is I prefer to buy uh, delivered at premises, in brackets, DAP. Uh, and this is essentially you buy a delivered price, right? It's delivered to your uh, warehouse or your brewery. The third one is I prefer to buy in pallet quan quantities. So we would typically pack high rise, but I think for, you know, um, small and medium enterprises, you probably just want to get a half pallet. Okay, so in this one, we've just said uh, buy a pallet, which is in about, say, 1,500 bottles or thereabouts. And the last option is I prefer to buy in 20-foot containers. Okay, so 20-foot containers, half pallet, uh, holds around 10 um, standard pallets. All right, so let's just move over. So there's your uh, choices there, if you can enter in uh, your thoughts on that. Uh, and then we'll just have a quick chat about... Uh, what we believe uh, is uh, works best for the brewers. So what what we hope to to understand there is, you know, how should we be costing our product on balance, you know, to to the market. So in the first instance, you know, assuming we, that we get some brewers to say, yep, we want to run this bottle or this bottle, um, you know, we'll look at the manufacturing location. So it could be uh, out of our Vietnam plant. Uh, and then we can look at, you know, how do we service you? So if you're based in Hong Kong, for example, how do we get that stock to you in the most cost effective manner? All right. And also to ensure that you've got stock on demand. Understanding that the warehouses are not big, and you know, when I went to go see um, Black Kite, I think they're on the 12th floor, right? So they actually had to go up the lift. So, you know, they have challenges in being able to get um, stock there, for example. Right, oh, so I think we've got. Uh, uh, nine people so far are sort of offering some feedback, so thanks for that. Uh, pallet quantities uh, delivered at premises. All right. Um, and a few people sort of X works, okay. 
and then a few people sort of uh, wanting 20 foot containers. So there's a little bit of a mix in there. I guess I'll open up questions uh, to Luke and Locke because I guess you've got different types of uh, breweries in terms of warehousing and being able to purchase. So would you like to be able to offer some feedback on that? Yeah, sure. sure. Uh, hey, Luke, Luke first. Go first. Luke first. Oh, all right. Uh, well, uh, yeah. So we're well, we're in Hong Kong. Um, so uh, obviously, warehousing cost here is, is really considerable. Um, you, it, you know, we we stack everything as high as we can vertically, and as you say, a lot of us are uh, not brewing on a ground floor or in a warehouse. We're, we're, we're brewing, you know, in an industrial building on the twentieth floor or whatever. Um, so that's that's a challenge for the Hong Kong market, definitely. Um, so uh, for me, I think I definitely put uh, prefer to buy pallet quantities. Um, you know, we, we especially if it's not um, like a, a bottle that we'd be using for our, our core products. So we have four core products, but we make two new products every month. So if it was like an unusual bottle shape. I certainly wouldn't be anywhere near taking a full container. We have got this small, really uh, fast-moving uh, amounts that would be really useful for us. Um, X Works. Uh, I, I pick X Works personally just because uh, my wife. Uh, she does logistics, so <laughs> she does all that stuff. Um, <laughs> she's very organised, so um, yeah, she, she does that. Um, yeah, that was my two two uh, selections. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the, for Hong Kong, we definitely need uh, small amounts of, of, of products that can arrive reasonably quickly and will help us a lot. Okay, thanks, uh, Luke. Lock? Yeah, so my, my top two was uh, the logistics included. Uh, it's always tough a little bit for, for us to import or export. Uh, I think based on the kind of um, of, of how things work in, in Vietnam, right? And sometimes it can be quite slow or, and challenging. And there's always like, you know, sometimes new rules popping up about uh, import importing. So I actually prefer to be uh, to be delivered to, to us. And the second one uh, was, you know, for us to do anything with with uh, with making a change, such as as bottles or productions of bottles, we want to ensure that we're able to to commit to uh, a large amount of sales. So yes, there's there's going to be something that that is uh, done out of you know because we. We want to do something very unique, but in terms of what I'm currently managing now is that if we do uh, a new product, we want to ensure that we know what is kind of the overall sales of that within like the next 12 month period. So one container or two containers or three containers, uh, it actually helps us to negotiate the, the, the prices with OI, for example, you know, taking three, three containers is different than, than than taking three pallets um, for yeah for other other ones uh, we we don't do much in terms of pallets at the moment for the fast moving bottles so the only thing that we do in pallets and we and even that you know we are kind of like lowest quantity for a pallet size is about like five pallets and that has to do with more of like the two liter growlers uh, why because you know sometimes you, you buy one by the time you run out you have to think about getting another one in uh, so it it really kind of messes up with our operations if you know let's do a quick inventory check how many growlers is there left let's do a quick inventory check how many bottles is there left so the only thing that comes to us in, in pallets now is is uh, the growlers, and and yeah, we we prefer you know to be delivered all, all the way to to our door. So at least we know that there's a certain timeline that has been kind of agreed between the two. And if there's you know any variations within that timeline, then we understand more in terms of like who 
it is that that we need to uh, to speak to. Uh, sometimes, you know, if we handle everything ourselves, it goes through a few different departments, and then a few different departments would say, "Oh, because I I didn't do this because of that department." Sometimes, right? Uh, not all the time, uh, but but it does happen. So overall, it's just managing like when is the timeline uh, if you are going to go to market with it, and and to to know that you know what you order and in the time that that you you need it that it comes yeah sure uh, look and i think that's all, all all fair and good um good good feedback and i think yeah, there's two different uh views on supply chain right you know with you um luke and in, in hong kong through to you lock and uh, ho, ho chi Minh. um and i think you know when we look at taking this to market i guess we'll you know we'll need to adjust the go to market and sort of cater for what your you know re requirements are for example um and also i think the other thing you know when we do say we're going to go to market that you know it's in market that you've got and this is for any brewer that you've got the assurity that the stock is going to arrive when we say it's going to arrive and that you've got the you know the aftermarket uh, service through account managers if you're getting into like forecasting uh and all, all those sorts of things um and probably the other call out you know once you're actually in market getting into the cadence of you know reviewing with the account manager to make sure that it is actually working uh, as we expect and you know as you know from my experience as brewers sort of get more mature you typically sort of go to uh you know it could be a one page a contract or or more involved depending on the complexity of what it is you're trying to achieve um, not that you know it's it's a nice to have. Sometimes it's a must to have, right? Because you know when you're selling into retail, for example, um, you know the retailers need to know that you've got sort of um, you know a, a sound plan to support them and their success as well. Um, now, definitely running out of time. I've got one more uh, to go. We okay, Charles, for time? Uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Time for one, one more, uh, one more question, one more um, okay. serving. So okay. we're going to go back to. Um, so given you've all um, sort of heard about what the um, you know what the bottles are and potentially some of the challenges, uh, here's another opportunity, right, for you to be able to vote for your favourite design. So I'd be interesting to see, you know, how it's changed if it's changed. Um, so if you can just, uh, uh, for the last time, just get your cameras out, uh, and then uh, we'll go to the selection page in a moment. All right, so just reminding you, you've got the river design, uh, the pagodia design, the boat design, and the snifter drink tainer. Okay, so let's go on to the page. Here we go. Uh, so we'll just wait for those results to come through and then um, we'll uh, see if it's changed or not. So I'm just going to go back and out again. Here we go. Uh, so we've got uh, nine people through, ten people through. Looks like the Pagodia design is trumping it second time round. And interesting, these snifter drink tainers come back up. So I guess that's... Um, interesting to see and the river designs has fallen back a bit would you bayard would you consider the the snifter drink tainer a, a different use type of packaging than the than the other three bottles yeah yeah look good good question charles i think the answer is uh yes yes it was a you know we've, we've only got an hour right so we were sort of challenged as to wanting to include that as part of the overall mix um just to see you know how how uh, you know like for like how it sort of stacks up. So the drink tainer is a different experience, right? The design of the consumer insights it's as close as you're going to get from drinking from a glass, 
All right, so the 42 mil rip cap, when you open that up, you're actually going to get a lot more aromas uh, from that. Okay, and it's also something that you can still put on your filling line with the, you know, with the change parts, but you, it also opens up for another experience uh, for a in-home experience. So you can close it uh, actually at the bar or on premise, you know, to put it in your four pack. So it gives, you know, it gives you an opportunity to differentiate and also give your consumers or your customers a different drinking experience. Um, so it is a slightly different uh, view. Steffi, did you have any sort of design inputs or design thinking on this? Yeah, you, you know, I was thinking maybe we even want to kind of disclose a little bit that we um, did had some research on those with consumers already, or uh, let's say with some of them, and this are the reason why we actually picked them. We had a lot more designs. Um, and those were basically the winning ones with the Pagoda design also coming first. So it kind of seemed to have um, some attraction around that. And then obviously, like you said, the drink tainer is more of like a different on-the-go solution or something that's rightly consumed out of the container, not necessarily like, you know, filled in a glass. So um, I guess it's just a different proposition, but it brings you in a unique position where you can sell this like, you know, on trade, have people taking it home, but you know, you could even, you can fix it on your filling line. It's a turnkey solution for applying that closure and also put it like in any supermarket you want. So, so uh, Bayard, what would be your next step now? So, so we've, we've run the, the workshop and we've seen, you know, we've had a look at the designs. If you decide, yeah, you know, if you if you elect to go for a particular design, what what would you what would you do, and how would you how would you bring that to market? Are you looking for partners to work with you to bring that to market, or will you just go out to everybody and say, hey, we've got a new design, do you want to give it a go? I and mean, what what would you do now? Well, I think the opportunity is for the people on the call, you know, or you know, over over the next few days, you know, come into the booth. You know, talk to us, uh, email Anton or, or myself. You know, would love to be able to work with um, you know some of the breweries. Uh, you know, to be able to take this to market. Now, if we can do that with, you know, one or two or three or four breweries, and we can get to our minimum pr production, uh, you know, we're happy. You know, just to to launch it with those brewers and then support them you know, in market, right? And what that looks like, let's, let's have a discussion because support can mean a, a lot of things, right? I'm sort of mindful of, you know, um, in terms of, you know, the pricing, but also of the value that we can create for brands in market. Uh, so in terms of process, uh, you know, contact us, you know, over the next week to two weeks, you know, we will we'll sort of firm up on which design that we're going to take to market. You know, it could be it could be two designs, for example. Um, fine tune around the actual specifics. Uh, so, is this a 328 mil? Is there any filling line considerations that we need to be aware of? Uh, are we talking amber? You know, or do you have another product that you would like to be able to maybe to consider flint? So, once we sort of understand, you know, what the uh, the demand looks like, then we can look to our production team. Uh, to make sure that we're doing our trials, that we've got a, a go-to-market date. You now, realistically, you know, we're in November. Uh, you know, realistically, it's probably going to be April, May in terms of that's how long it takes because we'd need to put down the moulds, we need to do a trial, we need to make sure that uh, it's all sort of set up internally with OI, but also equally, you know, we've had the opportunity to talk to all the brewers in market to make sure that, you know, we're all on the same yeah, the same page. So you're looking a few months before before you really start to get things rolling. And uh, but just, just at the moment, you're just looking for people out there who are interested to yep. join you with with the launch of the uh, the new yep. bottle. Well, I think of uh, I think Luke and Locke are pretty keen, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> so, can't can put anybody on the snap. spot online. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, what, what is the minimum order? What uh, is the minimum production that you guys need to do? 
it, well, look, it comes it comes down to uh, where we make it uh, because every country has slightly different machines. Okay, so you know, out of our Ho Chi Minh plant, we could potentially make this in blow blow, which is uh, I think an eight section double gob. Um, you know, so you look at a sort of a day's a day's run. You know, it's 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 going to be a lot less than if we sort of put it on our uh, NMPB. Um, you know, triple uh, twelve section triple line and in, in Zhao in Ching. Um, so what it comes down to is, you know, where we can get our minimum production up to, where the demand is, then we can take it to market. But you know, I would I would expect, you know, I don't I don't I don't want to say sort of any any specific numbers, but you know, it's it's going to be, you know, I think I think we can probably take it to market say out of Ho Chi Minh if we're getting. Sort of pre pre orders of you know two three four hundred thousand bottles, you know that 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 would be probably a you know a realistic sort of amount um, out of that specific plant. But you know if it's you know for example if it's just price, uh, you know and we've got someone who says look I can give you an order of three million over the next twelve months, that's a different proposition, right? Because then you're starting to get into being able to amortize um, NMPB molds. Right, so you're going from a 300 gram bottle to maybe a 220 gram bottle, and we could probably potentially go lighter, but you know that's not my job. It's up to the production and quality team to offer feedback on that. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I think we uh, we should be wrapping up now. Um, well, there was one question. Uh, we didn't answer live. Yes. There was, do you manufacture two liter growlers, um, which seal correctly? So, um, do we do two liter growlers? Yeah, I think out of the US they do growlers. I'm not aware that we do any uh, out of uh, Asia. Right. Me neither. I posted the uh, catalog in the questionnaire there, so and offered to speak at the booth. So um, whoever wants to join us there for any more information. Yeah, and, and if anybody wants to organize meetings uh, with Bayard or Steffi or with Anton. If you look them up under the people feed um, over the next couple of days, uh, if they just if they just leave their icons online, you can schedule meetings. So you can schedule a meeting um, or you can go to their booth and you can uh, contact them through the booth. They may not be at the booth at the time, but you'll be able to reach them through the booth and there'll be some product information on there as well. So, so um, anybody who is interested, uh, please feel free to, to get in touch with the team. Um, and just a, just a quick thanks uh, from me, right? So look, this wouldn't be uh, possible without you, Charles, you know, putting in the, uh, the great work. So, you know, heads, uh, you know, heads up to you just to say, thank you very much for allowing us to, you know, to be here and putting this together. Awesome event. I'll certainly be sharing it as best I can uh, to all my network uh, and Locke and Luke, thank you for giving up your time. Uh, and we certainly hope to um, you know, to be able to continue working uh, with you to to uh, you know hopefully get some uh, get get some more glass. Yeah, we're excited to see excited to see more glass on the market. So you see some new uh, some new designs, something that's been designed specifically for us uh, out here in Asia. So uh, thank you very much, Bayard and team, um, and thank you, Locke and Luke, for your valuable contribution to today's workshop. There's, uh, the guys also joined us last week in a workshop as well. So we've been calling on them beyond above and beyond the line of duty to help out with with today's workshop. So thanks very much, guys. You can uh, enjoy enjoy a beer now, well, and enjoy another one. Okay. Thank so, you for the invitation. Uh,